Well, hello, good evening, family. How are we doing today? Joel and Sherilyn here, and we are excited for another opportunity to join you on Family Talk tonight. We are excited that you're able to join us. We're looking forward to um, having a tremendous time with you. First of all, we just thank you. Um, we thank you for coming on and spending your um, some of your evening with us. Um, we're so, so excited um, and looking forward to all that God is going to do Amen. tonight. Amen. Um, first and foremost, Sherilyn and I, um, Sherilyn and I just, it's okay, we just share it. Okay. First and foremost, Sherilyn. Um, that is plaguing a lot of relationships and um, continues to, to be something that we see um, yeah. in, in every situation that we're working in recently. And um, so we can't move forward yeah. into a new topic because we're seeing this day by day yeah. um, as a real situation that's happening in many relationships. And so we just want to continue to talk about this because we know it's going to be helpful. Um, and so um, let's do us a favor, please. Share um, and like and share and comment and uh, interact and help us tonight so we can get this message out there. Anything you want to say, Charlene, before we hey, continue? Hey, good night, Kia. Well, um, thank you for joining us. Um, it's always, we know that it, it, you guys are busy people. You have a lot going on. Um, and uh, we know it from our own experience. We have three uh, growing children that are very active. In fact, we just came back from a weekend tournament with our youngest. And our old, um, our second um, child, our daughter, also had volleyball tournament, um, comp yeah, tournaments this weekend. So we just came back from Philly, and um, just getting prepared, getting everyone dinner and everything to come and share here before here we come on this. So forgive us for being a little um, late for those who are were waiting, but we are excited. We know that nothing before it's time, and we just know that this time is not going to be lost tonight. And so we just uh, thank you for joining us, and we ask, like Joa said, if you can help us by uh, sharing the message or. And also com um, comment, just like and give us a one, you know, just so that uh, the the algorithms will work uh, uh, on, the, on the page as well. So thank you for joining us. It's going to be an exciting topic. Um, I know a lot of you don't really talk, comment on the page or so on, but you do reach out to us in private, in messages and text message to say how much it's helped you. And you don't know how, how good that feels to know that there's so many people out there that are benefiting from the messages. So we could only imagine sometimes there's some of you that also say ask us you know when uh, are you guys live are you going live and so we say yeah we were live on uh, on Sunday and so that's why we ask if you can help us to share the message so that the algorithms will refresh on our page so those who might be browsing um, could be able to, to link in so thank you for joining us again we pray that you guys had a great weekend a restful one and um, without further ado are you finished sharing the yes. whole thing Okay, I was dancing there a little bit. Yes, and so so we're pumped. Um, thank you, thank you for dancing. Um, we're pumped about continuing this conversation. You know, we started out last week um, talking about this this very very um, important topic of why are we stuck. This is a question um, we asked ourselves many times in our relationship, mm -hmm. and this is a question that we get. Um, as a matter of fact, getting this question asked. Um, throughout this week by different people find, wanting to know, you know, how, how could you help us get unstuck from what I consider to be a, a dead marriage. Some people consider what they're feeling as being in a relationship or being married for 20 years, but feeling lonely and alone and mm -hmm. feeling like I'm trapped. Mm -hmm. I'm trapped and I don't know how to untrap myself from this um, marriage, yes. marriage that feels loveless, it feels lonely, and it feels like I'm the only one with some ambition, or I'm the only one that 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 feel like something is wrong, and that we need to improve and grow. Mm -hmm. And so today we want to talk about this again. You know, our foundational scripture mm -hmm. um, for this um, conversation comes from Genesis um, chapter two, verse twenty-four and twenty-five, that says, "For this reason." A man shall leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife, then the two shall become one flesh. And then ultimately, verse 25 says, and then 
you, uh, they are um, naked and unashamed, which mm-hmm. means that they reached a level of intimacy where they can be as transparent as any two people could be with one another because there is no shame, there is no hindrances right. in the process of, of showing each other where they really are. And so from that, part, um, from that scripture, we want to really focus on what is it that needs to be done in pursuit of becoming one so that that couple can now get unstuck from what they would consider to be a relationship that is not going anywhere. And it takes a few things to get to that place where you're always um, moving forward in pursuit of one another and becoming intimate. And a lot of times it is... um, some of these four things that I'm going to list. One of the main reasons we spoke about last week that couples feel like we're stuck or they're stuck is because they have no common goals. Mm. Not doing um, anything together. Mm. They don't have anything in common that they're working on. And so one of the reasons why they're stuck is absolutely no common goals. Another reason why couples feel stuck is because they don't have mutual respect for one another. You know, um, you cannot move forward and be passionate about a future together with someone that you don't respect. And it's not like the person doesn't deserve your respect. A lot of times they do, but we have a lot of hindrances or sometimes corrupt thinking in our mind that's causing us to not respect the other person. And a few of these things is, is, is what culture, what, what kind of culture have we bought into? Mm-hmm. Did we buy into the chauvinistic culture? that says that as a man, I can't respect you because you're a woman and as a woman, you're beneath me. If that's the thought process that we have, then it's hindering my ability to respect you and I can't build and move forward with someone that I don't respect. Or is it the feminist type of a thought process that says that I don't need a man. I'm married to one, but I don't need him and I'm not going to um, you know, submit and that word submit is a bad thing in the mind of a woman. And so she says, you know, I'm not going to uh, uh, conform to that type of thinking. And that's too old school for me. And so there's a rebellious type of a thought process. So a man that's married to a woman that feels that way is a man that cannot feel like he's being honored or respected. So his number one needs not being met. Her number one needs not being met as a female. Mm -hmm. And so with that type of a mindset is affecting our ability to build Mm -hmm. and to move forward and to stay progressive and to even feel like, you know what, we're moving and we're not stuck. And so mutual respect those things are hindering mutual respect based on what culture has done to us. Um, we mentioned also, yeah, um, just to recollect from mm-hmm. the last time, uh, when these things happen, a lot of times people think it's, uh, it's because, um, okay, let me go from the beginning. We, are real, we, we fail to realize or remember that marriage was not instituted by man or it wasn't instituted by law or it wasn't instituted by government. It, is a, it's, it was instituted and put in place by God. Mm-hmm. Hence, there are certain principles that God, like the, like the first scripture that you made, which is the foundation of all the laws of, and principles of marriage. When we are obeying those things, then we will see these, these areas in our lives improve. Um, but what happens is when we are operating like a feminist or we operating like a chauvinist, our own prayers are hindered. As scripture says, it says that when you, when you reject the laws of God or the commands of God, which is the word of God, then what happens is our prayer is an abomination to God. You know, so a lot of us are praying and believing God for certain things, but because we're violating certain laws, because we don't want to submit, because we don't want to respect, and because we're all in our feelings and emotions, and because um, we think that some of the behaviors or or principles are old-fashioned, and we want to do something new, what we end up is hindering ourselves. Our own prayers are not answered. Mm -hmm. Our own, um, you know, and we're good people, and like that's what we said. We're going to say, you guys are good people. Your intentions are not evil. 
successful. Yeah. yeah, you're successful, well in your own right. You may be walking in the, your, your gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. However, you're seeing yourself stuck in your marriage and you're wondering why. Why me? Why is this happening? And it's only because we're violating laws. And it has nothing to do whether we're beautiful, we're intelligent, we're intellectual, we're successful. It has to do with what laws are we violating. This is why Joel and I like to go back to the word, the foundation that has the principles of marriage, hence what we're talking about, Absolutely. common goals, mutual respect. Absolutely. And, and, and so, you know, common goals and mutual respect um, are two of the areas where it, it begins to hinder our process of, of really um, uh, um, bonding one. and becoming one and moving forward. And then, of course, if you, if you don't have goals, um, together and you don't respect somebody, it hinders your communication. Yeah. Uh, communication is the foundation to being on the same page. Um, you know, the Bible asks us a, a question in Amos 3, 3, can two walk together unless they agree? And you can't agree or get on the same page in the absence of communication. And so when we don't have common goals, when we don't have respect for one another, it's impossible to communicate. Yeah. Someone that I don't respect I don't feel I need to be in communication with. If someone doesn't respect me, um, uh, they don't feel like they need to communicate with me. And then if they do communicate with me, it's gonna be out of a place of disrespect and dishonor um, because they are basically resenting the fact that they even want, they even are in a, in a situation where they have to talk to you. You're right. Right. So communication is impossible. And then of course, tolerance. Um, is something that we won't have for one another. So, you know, we're talking about all of this and we just want to continue today talking about expectations. Right. Um, because every... Okay, the scripture that we talk, well, that, that I mentioned just, uh, Proverbs 28, 9, that, that says, He that turneth his ears from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. I wanted to give you guys a scripture because some people would be like, what? I've never heard that before. But it's right there in Proverbs 28, 9. Sorry. Yeah, ahead. absolutely. And so, um, thanks for that. And so, um, expectations is huge in terms of um, moving our relationships forward. Mm -hmm. And how do we set expectations in every season of our lives so that we are not stuck? Mm -hmm. What happens a lot of times is um, in a relationship, we don't exactly grow exactly at the same time yeah. or at the same mm -hmm. rate. <laughs> And so in a new season of a relationship, what you'll find happening to couples is that, you know, maybe, um, maybe the wife went through a traumatic experience or the wife um, is, is, is growing or working on herself or the husband went through something and he's growing or working on himself. And now because of the growth that this one individual in the relationship is beginning to experience, they feel like they can do better. They feel like they have a need to do better now. And then when they begin to feel that need to do better in life in general, they want to come on the same page with their spouse and, and, and start to move to a new level right, of right. accomplishment, new levels of intimacy, um, new levels of togetherness and oneness. And then all of a sudden that spouse begins to resist what they are now presenting, these new goals that they're now bringing to the table. And so the relationship is stuck because only one person has this desire to do better and to then to move their relationship right. to another level of intimacy. And so now a lot of times there is a new level of wrestling and fighting. It can almost feel like you're going backwards instead of going forward because now one of you have a new expectation and the other person is not meeting um, or, or rising to those expectations. So we want to talk today about expectations and new seasons, right, right Sherilyn? Right, right. Um, can you touch a little bit on, on new seasons that relationships go into and how it seems sometimes that the, one, the, that the, the, the person that is doing better or maybe they got a revelation from God or they grow in a relationship with God and they move into what they consider to be uh, should be a new season for them and now because their spouse is not coming into that season in the same way that they are seeing it now how that can cause them to now become impatient with their spouse mm -hmm. because oh they're not growing at the yes. same time they're immature um you know um i could do better no 
what I want I feel like this marriage is is not for me anymore we are unequally yoked we're unequally yoked all of this stuff becomes um it becomes like the playground for the devil now yes. um if we are not careful and if we don't do it the right way True. um and we don't communicate properly and set new expectations can you talk about that a little bit well first off i mean i mean experience experience is the best teacher so um joel and i went through that kind of experience and usually the person that is growing their eyes is now being open and they forget that we forget that we were were once in that dark place mm -hmm. we forgot that we attracted uh, our spouse mm -hmm. you know because the reason why we got married in the first place is because we were on the same level we thought the same we believe in the same things and now that i my eyes are open and i'm seeing new things which god promised that as you're growing everything your life does not stay the same we are constantly growing so as we are growing um and again if especially if we're growing in christ revelation and illumination usually comes to us and then we start to see um where we are we are if we had low self-image we start to gain self-image yes. and then all of a sudden we're seeing that oh my goodness um, my spouse is not treating me the way or value me the way that I should be treated. And of course, some of us might be looking at programs like this and they may say, yeah, my spouse don't do that to me. And oh, we're going through that and that type of thing. And you want what you see, but not realizing that everything is, there's a time and, and a uh, season on the, there's a time for everything under the sun, as says in, in Ecclesiastes. And now it's just being that you are in your growth season. So now when I was experiencing this, what the Holy Spirit showed me was his grace was sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. And the same grace that God gave me, I had to realize that I have to give it to my husband. Because I wasn't always in this way, in this place that I'm seeing and my eyes are being open. And this is where the, where the enemy comes in. He comes in and he tries to... Now, now, he was the reason I had you in the hole in the first place, in the darkness. And then now that you're starting to, 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 to fight him, resist him, which the, the scripture tells us that, you know, sub, sub, submit yourself to the Lord or resist the devil and he must flee. So as we start to read and get new information in our mind, we start to grow and then the illumination comes to us and then what the enemy starts to come in because he wants to get us in a place to steal our, our, our um, relationship, steal our joy, steal the new season of blessing that God has in store for us. And so he comes and tells us that our spouse is, is not good. Our spouse, all the it starts to amplify all the negative. And when we, we're realizing that we were in that place and we are also falling short. So I like the saying, you know, when uh, you point your finger at someone, there's three coming back at me. And so in the same thing usually happens. So this is where God calls us to be humble. Mm -hmm. Humility is the most important thing because now as we're growing, we're the stronger person is so to say in the marriage at that point and god says that the strong must must bear the infirmity of the weak yeah just just because in this season someone is growing faster than the other and so in this place we have to be humble and scripture showed this over and over in jesus his character you know if you are a believer in christ meaning that you're a follower of christ then you want to duplicate his mannerism his attitude his behavior his characteristics and god who became man, humbled himself, and then he humbled himself again to a servant to serve us. And what did what did Jesus Christ do do on the last um the last Passover on or that he was on earth? He washed the feet of his disciples, the very people that he was going to be dying for. And he was becoming sin itself. So how low can one person be willing to go in order to be elevated as our king and our lord? So the, he who um, humbles himself will be exalted. And in the, this situation, the person who is growing mm -hmm. is called to be very humble in this setting. Now, we, um, you may bear certain, because your eyes are open, you may be seeing a lot of things and you may bear a lot of backlash you might bear a lot of pain however this is where your strength comes so what does that look like to a person who is is being resisted by a spouse and even being mm. even you know also you know sometimes you're you're maybe being verbally abused by yeah. the person that you're you're trying to have them see things in a new way you're, you're trying to have your spouse see things in a new way and like the revelation that hi god that now i want to be able to do, share yes. with you and it's only right because how do you, they how do they how do they practically submit themselves to the ways of jesus and 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 become 
patient and all that stuff, servant, become a servant in their situation. Well, what worked for me is, again, the Word of God. The Word of God tells us that when we humble ourselves, meaning, and um, we seek His knowledge and His way, we be transformed by the renewal of our mind, we become engrossed in the Word of God. And what particular scripture that God helped me with was 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. That's a scripture on love. Um, I usually have my little cheat sheet. I got my little cheat sheet right here. And so what happened, I had to now demonstrate demonstrate this in conversation. So a lot of the times I remember in our relationship, if it's okay for me to talk about it, mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when I was growing, I was, I was like a new, 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 new Christian, new person that started growing and getting all excited about this newfound information. And so I'm, I'm overwhelming Joel, dousing him, oh Joel, we should do this and so on. <laughs> and he wasn't in that place. And it can be a turn off, you know, exactly. Um, when you're going at a person with new information and they're not there, yet and so I started feeling a little offended and scripture tells us in Psalm 119 165 it says shall the 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 throne no I'm sorry I'm talking about Psalm 94 20 that says that the death that um perfect peace have that they that love, that love the, thy law the laws of God and nothing by any means shall offend them and this what this scripture is really telling me that you know what Sherilyn why are you getting offended because your husband is not listening to you and and why are you not at peace because of this situation it's because I didn't know the laws of God I don't know the word of God and God tell us you know meditate upon his, day, his word day and night so we can have that information and and so 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7 was something practical that I could have put in place, which is love. Mm -hmm. You know, I needed to demonstrate the agape love and God was working in me to be able to demonstrate the agape love because mm -hmm. well, as I was growing, um, you know, and looking and growing, what he was actually teaching me is how to love you, how to love, you know, how to love my, my husband. And so how do I do that? It is not emotional. It's actually some actions that I have to do. So despite you were lashing back at me, I now had to now realize that, you know what? I have to know the law. The, I shouldn't get easy offended and I should have perfect peace when I know what to do. What is it that I'm supposed to do? Let's look at this particular law that God brings to me. And it's in 1 Corinthians 13. He says, love is kind. So when Joel was being that way, you know, you know, he might by say I don't girl I don't want to hear what you have to say not right now you know or he just listened but he didn't do and I'm feeling impatient what would happen I had to still be kind in the in my mm -hmm. process and and I had to be you know I, I didn't want to be uh, I had to be patient as well yes. you know that yes. was the number one thing patient. patient and that was the first thing that says love is patient, patient. the first yes. thing because God is patient with you and I and God was patient with me because I'm now excited about my my newfound growth and my newfound revelation. But that wasn't the case uh, five days ago. Can I say something? Up though? to fifteen. Can yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. You know, a lot. Sure. Of, a lot of times, <laughs> what I found and what we found in working with different couples is there was a season of the, this person that got this new revelation. There was a season when. Um, they weren't listening to their spouse in yeah. other things. Well, I wasn't listening. Let's right? make it plain. I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> yeah, they weren't listening to their spouse. I, don't even, wasn't, I wasn't even talking about our I know, situation. But, but I know a lot of things that God revel revealed to me mm -hmm. and I was now excited about. Mm -hmm. Be it was coming from you because I was in a place of, of darkness and I, um, you know, not really listening to you. Um, then you were, to you were telling me this stuff prior to. You know, yeah, anyway, yeah, not, yeah. not to cut you off. Yeah, so so a lot of couples we find, um, they've been in that situation where, um, you know, let's let's use our example, our husband and wife example, where a husband was speaking or or trying to help his wife get on the same page on different ideas, maybe not the same things, mm -hmm. but different things, and she resisted it for years or 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 for a season or or other seasons, and. He got to a place where he, he got fed up or, mm -hmm. or he gave up. And then now um, he has become more complacent now mm. in, 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 in this new season. And now she's growing. Mm. Now she's growing. She sees the light. Now she wants him to get unstuck. Mm -hmm. She wants him to come out of his place of complacency. And now he's tired. 
Mm-hmm. He's tired, and, and not only is he tired, but he's resentful. Mm. He's resentful because in his season of trying to lead, she resisted his leadership. Yeah. And now that yeah. she's tired of being stuck, and <laughs> she has gained a revelation from God, and, and she wants him to now wake up again and come alive now and roll with me, um, he is, um, sometimes he's lashing back. Yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, he's in a bad place now. And he's, um, he's resentful. And um, unfortunately, the enemy uses us against one another. And now he's keeping record of wrong yeah. from the past. And so he, he refused to cooperate with you because he feels like there was a season when I was telling you this. Mm-hmm. There was a season when I was speaking and you didn't want to hear me. And now you want me to hear you? Yeah. No. I'm go- and, and sometimes it's tit for tat. Yeah. Sometimes we're punishing the other person right. so that they can feel what we felt back when you weren't listening to yeah. us. Right? And so now you're in this battle. And it can become a vicious cycle of you being stuck just because you're not, we're, not, we're not empathetic enough. We, don't, we have short memory. You know what I mean? We don't even remember the season when... Um, we were in their position yes. and now we're uh, in a new s- season and we want them to fall in line with us. And so this is what happens a lot of times. And uh, we hear this complaint all the time, especially from men. We hear the complaint that, you know what? I was telling her this. You know, what? there was a time when I was saying this and she wouldn't listen. And now, you know, she found this new revelation or she got this new found love and relationship with God and she want me to come on the same page you know what I mean and so there's a level of resentment there and and I believe that um, we have to always honor God and trust God and forgive Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. you know unforgiveness is something that will cause us to be stuck in our relationship because we're busy you know keeping a record of wrong and it's the number one weapon of Mm -hmm. the enemy against people and in such a major way once unforgiveness is in because jesus died to forgive us <laughs> you know that's the, the first thing so that we can have forgiveness of all sin and so now now knowing that we have the ability to forgive others because we were forgiven and also for us to forgive ourselves and we're not taking it satan loves it and, and everything that he throws at us is to keep us in this place stuck in the mentality of unforgiveness yes. knowing that once we're operating in it the scripture Scripture tells us clearly, says God says, if you do not forgive others their trespasses against you, uh, against them, um, you, us, then he won't forgive us of our own trespasses. So a lot of us, again, good people, well, well intentioned, you know, hardworking people, doing kindness, you know, for others, serving the community, all these good stuff. And but these little law, these little things like these laws are being violated. And remember, I told, I mentioned in Chris, um, Proverbs twenty eight six where it says that you know when we when we reject the laws of God, when He tell us to for, uh, forgive and we don't, when He tell us to show grace and we don't, when He tell us to be patient and we're not patient, then our prayer are not answered. They're actually an abomination. An abomination means that your prayer is detestable to God. There's no one else that can, can, can answer our prayers except God. So it's so important that we not do these things. Um, this is when we do realize that our marriage was not given to us by each other. Joel didn't develop marriage. I didn't develop marriage. The world didn't develop marriage. The government didn't develop marriage. God did. So we are supposed, or I should go even farther. You know, the world did not, science did not create human beings. We didn't create ourselves. We were created by the creator. So he knows how we operate. So the most, the, the, the wisest thing for us to do is to go and see the manual. How are we supposed to operate? And so, again, scripture tells us clearly that when we reject the laws of God, even our prayers are an abomination. I love Proverbs 3 as well. Um, you can find Proverbs 3 for me. Proverbs 3 tells us clearly that, you know what, these are, if we do these things, these are the things that will happen to us. And um, a lot of times, a lot of us are struggling with anxiety, stress. We're overwhelmed. We're depressed. We want to give up when it comes to our marriage or life in general. And it says so here, it says in Proverbs 3, 1, my son, do not forget my law, my instructions, my word. You know, um, but let your heart keep my commands. 
So when we're in a, a um, in a in a fight or you know in a situation where we're we're feeling that we're unequally yoked, in these times we're supposed to have had the word of God in our heart so that we can pull. Because if we're truly growing in Christ, then that means we would have that understanding of the word and we would demonstrate it to our spouse and not try to beat them over the head with it. Mm -hmm. Or try them to get them to manipulate them to to do our way because we we found this new revelation or understanding. It is to it is for us to demonstrate it so that our spouse would see our behavior and be won over by that because it's authentic. So it says in Proverbs three one, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. L this is what happens: length of days and long life. And that's not all. And peace mm -hmm. shall it add to you. So a lot of us, because we are stressing, we're not forgiving. We're not showing grace. We're not patient. We fall, then we fill up anxiety. We are overwhelmed. Our emotions are in a flip-flop. What, what are we doing? We're taking from our own life. Mm -hmm. The peace is not there. Okay. And, 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 and you, know, you know all the slew yeah. of um, medication people are taking today yeah. to medicate things that if we just humble ourselves and, uh, and learn the word of God. Yeah, and I think the most, um, I guess the most, uh, the, 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 the symptom that most marriages are feeling more immediately that's putting the relationship under stress. We may not be thinking about the fact that our life is being shortened, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the thing that we feel more immediately that's causing us to, to feel stuck and frustrated is the fact that there's an absence of peace mm -hmm. in the relationship. Um, there's an absence of peace and that could be very disturbing. You know, mm -hmm. anybody that and you guys know this, sure. anyone that's in a relationship where you feel that there is no peace and there's constant un unrest, um, you know, you know how um, heavy of a burden that could be to be in a relationship, especially over an extended period of time. You know, anyone can deal with a little bit of unrest for a day or two mm -hmm. if you're going to talk about it with someone that seemed to be, you know, a reasonable human being that want to come to the table and talk about the issues. But when you're in a relationship where you feel stuck and you feel like you're with someone that is unreasonable and someone that is shutting down on you or someone that is becoming irate and, and they're just unreasonable, um, and the relationship lose and you're losing your peace and um, you know you're hiding you're going to work and working extra time or you're doing other activities to just stay busy and stay out of the house and stay out of the way mm -hmm. um, that's not a good way to live and mm -hmm. so um, when you're in a situation like that for 15 and 20 years, it will wear you down because you're only human. And you're also and so, creating your own peace because that's not the kind of peace that God wants us to have. When we are starting to do things actively to create our own peace, i.e., um, instead of addressing a situation that's happening, that we are finding other things that we want to do. Mm -hmm. And women do the same thing, that we get involved, so involved with our children's life, in their personal life. We want to be our children's best friend. We are so in involved with Activities within our community even more so than paying attention to the one number one relationship that God has entrusted. We chose actually. We said God, we wanted to get married, so we're the one who went to say God, we wanted to participate in the thing that in the in the, the institution that you've created. We want the peace and blessings of that. So we 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 went beautifully in our white gowns and our beautiful tuxedos and said, you know what, we want to participate in that that. But then now when it's time for us to be able to go through the process of getting becoming that gem because under that pressure of life it's supposed to get us to be uh, the gem that pulls put us together as one we don't want to deal with the pressure and also we're not even going back to God and some of us may not know that God is the one that um that is it that that wrote that developed marriage and created marriage and he has um the, the principles to help us be successful in that but instead of going back to God for the help we look for man's solution, temporary solution, mm -hmm. or we go in our emotions and we listen to, again, the devil who gives us great ideas on how we to deal with it. Absolutely. And so we create our own peace, Absolutely. try to create our own peace that lasts only for a moment. Absolutely. So let's rein in on expectations for a second, yeah. because that's really yeah. what we want to talk about tonight. Yeah. We want to talk about expectations. How do we begin to come together 
and set new expectations so that we can move in the same direction. And, and this is something that every married couple got to become good at. When we don't become good at setting new expectations for the new seasons that we're facing, what's going to happen is we're always going to be at war, we're going to be at odds, and the relationship is going to be stuck. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're in a worse um, situation or position than you were in prior to this new true, season true. and so how do we um, practically kind of like set new expectations and it comes down to number one having common goals when you w w what what should you be doing on the offensive so that you don't get to this place because <laughs> you, you can't wait till you get to a place of being stuck mm. um, to then fight for the marriage Mm. You got to play offense. You know, you can't just play defense in, in marriage. Mm. You can't play defense in relationships. You got to get out front of the problem. And to be out front of the problem, you got to have new goals and you got to have the same goals all the time. Right. So here's what Sherilyn and I do. And here's what God in, it, in his infinite wisdom d did. God says, God, God says in his word, that morning by morning, new mercies he's giving us, yeah. right? He's giving us new more mercies every day. And so we could talk about yearly setting new goals, but we could also talk about how do you reset your expectations with each other daily so that you don't fall into this trap of you being unequally yoked after a year of going through marriage without communication, right? And so what's your communication like with one another every single day? You know, are we on the same page every day? And here's the first place that most marriages go wrong. Mm. Most of us go wrong because we never take two to five minutes every morning when we open our eyes to grab our spouse's hands and say a quick prayer together to begin that day. Mm. You'll be amazed what praying together in the morning, even if it's two minutes, does for your expectation of one another and does for your oneness for one another, renewing your oneness daily and renewing your expectations and keeping you on the same page and growing you together at the same pace every single day. That is a no, that if you don't do that right now and be honest with yourself, be honest with your spouse if you're looking at this together. Uh, begin to assess your relationship by asking yourself this question. Do we, does, do we pray together every day? When was the last time we grabbed each other hands in the morning before we started our day and we prayed together? Number one, we prayed for God's protection. Number two, we prayed for our children. Number three, we pray for God's guidance on mm -hmm. what we should and how we should go through this day to accomplish you know what we need to accomplish through the day and also do we pray for god's will for our marriage and our life for that day and for strength right and for strength and guidance right so that's number one if we are not on the same page in our uh, pursuit of god's will for our family and our marriage daily then we will find ourselves in a situation where we may get to a place where we feel stuck and we're on two different pages right um, Sherilyn and I do this daily, right? Number, number two, do we have a, 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 a level of communication every day outside of just coming home back in the evening and, and, and having dinner or maybe not even having dinner together? Do we talk? Do we check in on one another every day? Do we care for one another every single day? Uh, men, do we have a habit of checking in on our wives to see how she's doing today? Women, do you have um, this habit of checking in on your husband to find out how is, how's your day going? Everything okay? Is there anything I could do to help you today? Can I pray for you if, if there's something you need help with spiritually? Can I pray for you? How could I pray for you? Do you know the state of mind of your spouse daily? Right? It may seem like a simple thing, but it is a tremendous thing checking in on the state of mind of your spouse daily. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine going two weeks, then two months, then six months, then a year without this habit of checking in on the state of mind of your spouse daily? 
you, you see how far apart you can drift in two months and then six months and then a year where you have no idea what's really going on in the heart of hearts of your spouse because number one, we're not praying together. We're not, we're not asking God to help us and guide us and bring us closer to each other. And then we're not following through by communicating and checking in on the state of mind of that, of that person. And, and that's caring. Um, that's what caring is all about. What I find is when we continuously care for one another on a regular basis, we will begin to grow our ability to have respect for each other. Mm -hmm. We are selfish creatures. And when we realize that someone cares about us, when they have something of value to share with us, we're more apt to respect what they have to say because they have poured or they've made deposits into us. Mm -hmm. We don't normally um, care to hear from people who we don't believe care about us. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Even if we're married to them, if we're married to them and they have not shown us regularly and consistently that they care for our soul, they care for our mental health, they care for the, the issues that we may be dealing with. If a, if a husband doesn't show that he even respects what his wife does, if she's a stay-at-home mom and she's dealing with young children and we don't really care for what she may be dealing with at home, the pressures that she's dealing with in, in terms of a child that may be sick or a child that because the child is sick, the child is not resting or the child is crying and they're under that pressure. They're trying to cook. They're trying to take care of the needs. Maybe we left them a list of expectations that they need to meet for us as the husband and plus they're trying to care for a child that maybe is going through something. Maybe you have a child that has special needs and you don't really think about the level of, of stress and burden that that puts on her. When we're not checking in and hearing about um, her state of mind and being empathetic about what her life looked like at home while we're out working, it says to her that, well, you know, he don't really care. He don't check in. Um, he, doesn't, he doesn't think that what I'm doing is important. And so what begins to happen is there's a level of resentment that the enemy is building a case against And us that's why it has spouse. to be a mutual thing. Mm -hmm. We cannot be doing tit for tat. For example, now, yes, a husband um, could show his hus wife that he cares in that, in that sense. And he may be going through some stresses at work. Yes. He might be getting overwhelmed by his boss or so on and so forth and a pressure on his finan their finances and his concern about the family. And this is why it's so important for both husband and wife to care about each other so much that you're, you're constantly working to outdo caring for each other mm -hmm. you know and now watching and say you know well he don't do you didn't do this for me so i'm i'm not you know i feel like you know you don't care about me and i care about you more than you that's some schoolyard business that's some little children stuff Yes. You know, we have to be mature and be giving. Scripture tells us when we give, it is then given on to us. This is a principle from God that whatever, whenever we're giving, it must come back to us. Not to say that we're giving just so we can receive back. But people like to uh, um, put this into money because they just care about money. But the same deposits that we want to have coming back to us in terms of relationship and, and, and care and love, we want to be first be the mm -hmm. biggest depositor. Husbands and wives should be out trying to outdo, outdo each, other, each other, serving and yes, caring for one another. But when you do that, do you know what kind of marriage you would have? Mm -hmm. You would kick the devil butt so much, and your children will be looking at this thing, and they'd be cheap. it could turn around. Because scripture tells us that when you're behaving like this, you're righteous. You're in right standing because you're looking more like Jesus Christ. And then and then what happens is that our children's life stand to be to be blessed because um, um was it proverbs tells us that you know that though hand join in hand the wicked will not go unpunished but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered now you are the righteous when you're behaving like that when you're outdoing each other as husband and wife caring for each other you know out trying to outdo each other you're behaving in righteousness and what happens is that anything your children you may think that you might not have time to take care of your children automatically you will see the children being delivered for anything so if you have that child 
child is backsliding, have behavior issues, attitude problems, and so on and so forth, you'll see that child behavior start calming down. Why? Because you and your husband are looking to outdo each other in kindness, respect, and honor Absolutely. from one another. I'm telling you guys, this stuff is, is powerful and it works, but we just have to trust God's word. We have to know it and we have to trust him. Absolutely. We can't be lip servicing and could quote the Bible and the scripture and we're not living it out. Absolutely. So my thing is, you know, like you said, you know, we both have to outdo each other and not being tit for tat and complaining when, we, when we're not getting our needs met. Absolutely. I see Mark mentioned in the Mark Benshop mentioned in the comment section, new expectations. Yeah. You know, we, we, we're going to have to set new mm -hmm. expectations because um, no two people are the same day to day and month by month. You, you'll realize that the person and the mentality and some of the things that um, were desires of yours in January, what month is this now? This is uh, April. Mm -hmm. In April, you're in a place that's different. Mm -hmm. You may have achieved some of those things back in February that you started out in January wanting to achieve. Now that you have achieved them, there's no need for you to have that, the expectation of the same things that, that's already <laughs> off your checklist. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of times what happens is a husband and a wife may start the year with a mindset that's good for you when you started the year and now you've accomplished five things that that, that mindset was necessary for and now you need a whole different new um, level of motivators you need new um, you need new habits because you done took care of those things back in February and now some of these know, habits are probably necessary to maintain the new level of accomplishments too absolutely and so um, you may need to get a new book that y'all need to read together y'all may need to be uh, watching a program together like this maybe one of you began watching this program and some things um, that you never thought of kind of came and, 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 and hit you. Your, your eyes are open to some new things because back in December, both of you weren't looking at anything. Now, maybe the husband's on here consistently looking or the wife is on here consistently looking and you realize that, wow, we could work on our intimacy. A lot of the things that were desires of my heart, I'm hearing about them from this program and we don't have them. Wow, I want this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now your husband is still back in December where everything was good and he's not watching this with you. And so you're talking to him about this in bed at night and he's getting upset because now to him, you're trying to you know, add a new responsibility to his list and he's not ready for that. Or right? he might feel in, like you're, you're, you're knocking him, like mm -hmm. he's not, okay, she's still showing, Telling yeah. me that, that I'm not, not good enough, you know, yes. kind of thing. If he's offended. He's offended by, by what you're saying or maybe the way it was presented. Mm -hmm. And so new expectations has to be set. And let God guide you on how to deliver those messages. Let God guide you on when and how to, to bring this new information to your spouse. And so sometimes we're very zealous and sometimes... Um, we may have, you know, uh, personality differences that cause us to be a little blunt. Um, and then we present new information to our spouse in a way that's offensive and it's not well received. And so be very careful and be very prayerful about who your spouse is and understand their personality, understand where they are mm -hmm. and, and ask God to guide you on how to deliver um, what would we would consider to be difficult t conversations, how to have those difficult conversations, right? You might need to do them on a date night. You might need to do those difficult conversations when you've affirmed one another by consummating your marriage that night, okay? I don't know what it is. Ask God to guide you to prepare an atmosphere that's going to be more conducive for you guys to have what would be considered to be more challenging and more difficult conversations. And believe you me, he will help you. Believe me, he will help you to do it at a dinner. He may help you guys to do it when, you know, after you finish having sex. Maybe that's the greatest time for your spouse to be wide open for, for you know, more difficult, challenging conversations. But whatever the case is, God will guide you in, in, in how to do that. And continue, like Mark said in the comment section, to set new expectations regularly. But like I was mentioning earlier, if you don't ever want to get behind the situation, 
you want to create some habits of regular um, communication. And the greatest way to open the lines of communications daily mm -hmm. is to begin your day pursuing God. And the mm -hmm. way to do that is through daily prayer. When you got a daily prayer life and a daily habit of talking about things and checking in on one another, you'll always find yourself getting ahead of the expectation issues. You'll always find yourself not getting stuck because when you pray together and when you have regular conversations on a daily basis, these topics will come up in bite-sized bits. They're not going to pile up on you. Here's another thing that used to happen to Sherilyn and I. Um, we would be in a good place and because we're in a good place, I'm happy, you know, and this is just my mode of operation based on my personality and maybe the bad habit of complacency. Um, I would feel like, yo, we're in a good place. Awesome. And then I move on for weeks. I'm just happy because the last thing I remember is that we were good. Last conversations we had, we were solid. Everything is good. We got no issues. And now I'm running, running hard. I'm going to work every day. I'm working hard. And I, I feel good because I'm working hard and I'm providing and, and, and things are going good at work. And, and the last time we talked, everything was good. But between then and now, there were a lot of things that were building up in Sherilyn's heart um, that were unaddressed because we hadn't spoken now in about 21 days about anything concerning us, the children. The kids are telling her stuff. She's observing the children and she's seeing some things, you know, about their habits maybe that she don't like. I didn't, I never came home and asked, hey, how are the kids? How's everything? What are you experiencing while I'm not there? You know, you know, guys, you know, there is life happening in your house <laughs> in your absence, right? <laughs> and so because she might be more involved with them and the, the, the day to day operations of things that's happening in the house. There are issues that are piling up on her heart that maybe you never asked about. And then all of a sudden, when it becomes too overwhelming and her heart has incubated and multiplied those issues, she explodes one day on you about how you don't care, how you don't, you know, you don't listen, how, you know, you're not spending enough time with her. You don't spend time with your children. You're not talking to your children. You're not leading. <laughs> <laughs> right? All of those things happen in one conversation. And all you could think to yourself is, where is this coming from? The last time we talked, everything was great. Well, guess what? The last time you really talked was about three months ago. And in three months, a lot has happened. We don't really, we don't really understand how much can happen in one day. Yeah. How much can happen in one day? As a matter of fact, at the end of every day, if you're a police officer, you know this, at the end of every day, you have to fill out a detailed report on your day and hand it in, right? They don't even let you close out your, your, your scanner and check out of, of the dispatch system and go home without turning in your report for the day. Because if you don't, the department will miss so much of what has happened during the day that they would lose track of things that are going on and things that you encountered. How many people did you pull over? What happened when you pull them over? You know, did you have to pull your gun when you pull them over? Do you need counseling based on an experience that you had that day? You know, do you know, if you don't have and you don't turn in reports or you don't even call on the radio and say, this is what I'm experiencing right now. I got a, an irate guy. You, or, you know, or there was a shooting exchange, or you experienced a suicide while you were on the job, or you experienced, you, 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 you got a call about something was going on in an apartment, and then when you guys broke in and got into the apartment, you found a dead body. This is, these are experiences cops go through every day, right? If you experience these traumas every day, and you don't report them, and you don't even get the counseling and the help you need, you can even experience PTSD as an individual, and then the department don't even know how to help you. Now you can get upset and say, they don't even care about my mental health. Look at the things that I go through on a daily basis. Guess what? There was no reports handed in daily about what you were dealing with every day. Now after 30 days, you're in a mess. They're in a mess because they can't track what's been happening. So the relationship between you 
and your and your and your superiors it's sour they don't allow that to happen because they make you hand in a report every day so you you, your relationship with your boss at in a in a job like that is completely transparent because they know what happened to you from the time you got on the clock to the time you checked out at the end of every single day but no one's putting that discipline on us as married folks that is the responsibility and the choice that we have to make and man I'm going to be quite honest quite honest with you based on scriptures in Corinthians it's our job to lead the charge in this area it's our job because we were detailed as the head right we were detailed as the, as the one at the helm taking the responsibility for the leadership role and so because we were we have to be the one that 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 initiates uh, this daily response of beginning the day, number one in prayer, like I like I recommend, but and then what does also prayer do? Because a lot of people might be looking at this and say, okay, prayer is gone. Um, is uh, I don't know, but the prayer of God. What prayer does? It takes the responsibility out of your hands and put it in God's hands. One and number two, it communicates your spirit. It humbles your spirit mm -hmm. before the higher authority that is able to bring the peace and the comforts and the transparency that's necessary for the conversation that you you will have or communication. It sets the tone, a peaceful tone, a surrendered heart, you know, um, a contrite heart. These are things that God look upon and there's no law against it and God loves. So God is able to use. He's able to communicate. Holy Spirit is able to, to help you see the other person. Mm -hmm. It helps you to understand things that you clear you, you might not have understand or or care to pay attention to had you not start with a prayer. Prayer brings so much um, um, uh, uh, unison. It brings peace. It brings um, a, a level of a supernatural power, a divine help that would help you through your day and, and building that intimacy that's necessary. Absolutely. You know, I, I put a post out on my Facebook page a few weeks back and it says, prayer is God's phone number. Mm -hmm. How do you reach God? His phone number is prayer. And when you reach him, there are certain things that you want, right? There are certain things that you need um, and, and, and help is one of them. Divine help is one of them. And I think, um, you know, Sherilyn, it's good that you slow down and kind of clarify that because quite honestly, uh, most of us are trying to do this life and have this expectation and, and be unstuck on our own or in our own strength. But we never really garnish the, 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 the divine help that we need um, to get through it. And there's a lot of things that um, our you know finite mind can't really can't really grasp. It's also sorry that, prevents that God... prevents any one of us from taking control over the the, mm -hmm. the conversation Absolutely. because sometimes you know the day because sometimes when we don't start it, one person may have not mm -hmm. may have went to to bed with certain thought process. And they got up and it's been multiplied. It usually happens in women more than mm -hmm. men. And it's multiplied. So when the husband now grabs your hands and pray, mm -hmm. it's like, wow, it's a, there's a security. There is a mm -hmm. peace. puts things in place and it kicks the devil's butt he doesn't like it so what he was planning to use those thoughts about now it cannot be used against you know you but you'll be able to to, to now bring it out more and it, or even get you to the point to where you will communicate that absolutely absolutely you know there's a level of trust that is built um when we know that we're following someone that's following someone <laughs> and there and there's no better someone to know that your leader is following than the almighty god yeah. right and so setting new expectations daily will put us out front of the problem mm. um you know sherilyn you know you and i set new goals and expectations every year which is great we, um, just to let you guys know we cover this in other topics but like at the end of the year sherilyn and i usually go into a fast and 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 kind of you know quiet our spirits we shut things down and then we may take a day or two day little getaway and do a little bit of planning at the end of the year to kind of start our new years and be on the same page with things that we want to accomplish for our family for ourselves for our health our finances 
um, you know, every area of our lives. We sit down and we kind of detail and put things on paper. You know, we write down our vision on paper and make it plain so that we are on the same page about things that we generally want to accomplish for the whole year. But what keeps us out front of the problem of falling into, um, in, into a relationship that is stuck is that we do pray every day and we do communicate daily and we try our best to, to, to check in on the needs and the mindset of one another daily because there's so much that does happen in one single day. Amen? Now, a lot of people may be saying that's all well and nice, but, we, you know, I mean, we are, we are not perfect. We are in this just like you guys. And sometimes we wake up in the morning mm -hmm. and you don't feel like praying. A lot of times Mr. Ross wake up and he's very tired, <laughs> you know, and um, a lot of times, you know, I said, okay, Cookie. I call his name. I say, okay, let, let us, let us, um, let us pray. Would you like to pray? And I would hold his hands and he said, okay, you know, in his dream, in his sleepy voice, it's all right. And then he starts and sometimes he's falling asleep in between it. And then I start to pray. So we're supposed to help one another because the two become in one. And so this is how his helper comes out and just starts to pray. And then he wakes up and he goes praying. And then all of a sudden it takes life. So yes, there are going to be days that yeah. you don't feel like doing it. It's not a religious act. It's an authentic act. But the consistency is the name is a very important in the pro in, in, um, in this. In the process. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, the, the biggest thing as we wrap this up tonight that we do want to, to really grasp and understand is that this is not something, um, getting your relationship unstuck is not something that's gonna be automatic. It's going to happen because of the fact that we are in pursuit of it. That's why, that's why we began this conversation with Genesis 2, 24 and 25. For this reason, a man leaves his father and mother, cleaves to his wife. Cleaving is a process mm -hmm. of chasing after and really working towards getting something done, right? He cleaves to his wife and then the two shall become one flesh. Then you become naked and unashamed. That is a process. And sometimes your relationship goes in ebbs and flows. There are seasons that you go through. Um, you're human. You get tired. You face difficult situations like the loss of loved ones. Um, you know, you may go through hard times where, you know, something happens in your extended family that knocks the wind out of you. And how do we... How do we care for each other daily so that we can maintain the strength that we need to get through it? Um, and that is what we want to we want to develop or help you develop the habit of not waiting until New Year's or New Year's Eve to really address um, new expectations. But how do we do this regularly? So that well, we Joe, you spoke consistent. about the positives of, of new expectation and it's good to have new having new expectation is a good thing mm -hmm. but there are some um sometimes in within that new expectation sometimes we have unrealistic expectation mm -hmm. of one another and what do i mean like a lot of times like we start off the conversation talking about that kind of unequally yoke um mm -hmm. um relationship or it feels like that because one party is growing and one party is enthusiastic about growth and the other has been life has hit them so hard that they're in a place where they're dragging a little bit so now this person that is growing and excited and is ready to go forward may be criticizing and complaining about the person that seemed the one pardon that be seemed to 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 drag in their foot and they may have once had a lot of um, respect and um, admiration for that person in the in the beginning and now they're complaining they're like oh this person doesn't do this you know and there's a trust now expectations, we want to make sure that we don't have unrealistic expectations because our expectations should always be on God because he's the one we trust. Mm -hmm. Expectation equivalence um, in this conversation to trust, you know, and sometimes we put all our trust in our spouse, like we put so much trust in that individual and then we're upset because they're falling short and that creates an anxiety inside of us. When scripture tells us in Jeremiah 17, 5 that Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. And what's happening here is that that spout that is growing, they're really taking their high eyes off of God and they're placing it, everything they consume on the negative, um, that like the negatives that their partner is going through mm -hmm. at that point. When they're supposed to, like we talked about, care and in caring so we could encourage, uplift. Uh, Proverbs 12, um, 18, 21 or 21, 18 says, you know, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And those 
those who love it will live live by its fruits paraphrasing well basically encouraging uplifting that person more than telling them what they're not doing criticizing and also not even to them but complaining to friends family children your children or in your own mind replaying all the things that that person is not doing at that point is actually working against you the person who is growing and again that that that's like a prayer that you're giving your word will um will will go into God's God's ear and you're giving instructions whether to the angels to go and do what's positive or you're giving a, your words to the devil the the demons who are going to go and work against your 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 spouse and so you actually becoming do it becoming a con co-conspirator with satan against your own marriage you're destroying your own marriage with your word so expectations it shouldn't be unrealistic like since i'm if i'm the one that's growing in the in the marriage i don't use this and and lord to lord over my spouse i'm like the like the scripture says love is patient i'm to be patient with my my um my spouse and i'm not always self-seeking seeking my own desire like you know because my spouse is not doing this then i'm this person and I can't trust him or you know I can't do this I don't want to tell him about this or tell her about this because I don't think they could handle it we're supposed to trust God that we're able to now demonstrate love to this part this partner and um, the expectations now go to God because it's God's word that you're trusting as you're growing you are trusting God your expectations and that is the fact that God's work word will work for you so when I'm kind to my spouse when I serve my spouse when I show love eventually that my spouse's heart will get uh, softer if it's hard and they will then now start to do or become what God called them to be and we're going to eventually not be unevenly um, yoked yeah. so and, that's what I wanted to bring up absolutely and, and and so that's why what Sherilyn just mentioned is critical to understanding the daily pursuit of holding each other's hands mm. and going to God in prayer because when you're doing, when you when you stay in that mode, that takes care of unrealistic expectations. Mm. When you stay in the mode of the pursuit of God mm -hmm. and the word of God and the instructions of God, it takes care of unrealistic expectations because what both of you are saying is God, we're both coming mm. to submit to your way of doing marriage. Um, we're both coming to, to, to submit to to what your word says together on what marriage is supposed to be. And even more specific, when you do this on a daily basis, what you'll find yourself doing is you'll find yourself solving your daily challenges um, with the word of God and the instructions of God. Um, and so you're not going to put unrealistic expectations or lean um, on, on man or, or on flesh um, in an unrealistic way because you're both bringing your issues, you're bringing your burdens, all of your cares. You know, sometimes you can start a week with a financial deficit or a financial need that's greater um, than you know how you're going to solve. But if you had this habit of bringing your stuff to God in prayer every day, that specific challenge that week would be on the table before God. And it allows you the freedom to cast your cares on God and not lean on, let's say, your husband to solve the problem or the husband lean on the wife to solve the problem. You both are bringing and submitting that problem to God, asking God to speak um, and, 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 to, and to intervene in your situation. And then when you're checking in on each other throughout the day in conversation, you know, you'd be surprised how... Um, you know, God or the Holy Spirit may lay on one spouse's heart uh, uh, an answer, and you call to check in, and you know, and, the, and and your spouse says to you, you know what? Um, I got this idea, and they and they say it to you, and and a light. Specific problem, mm -hmm. but that that type of of lifestyle or that type of of, of living. Um, on, is only established and maintained when, when, when you make it a habit of bringing your, your situations regularly uh, before God and getting out in front of this challenge. So expectations is something that we can set um, regularly and have new expectations and grow together if we are in, in pursuit of God and, and have a prayer life uh, before God every single day and we're growing and, and we're we're basically aware 
We're, we have a high level of awareness about each other and where we are. And any changes that are happening with one another, uh, we're on them every day. We're not waiting for six months for new things to pile up and to be surprised by what has been pressuring our spouse. It may, make sense? And so caring about each other daily and, and hearing about each other daily is very important. All right. Here we go. Um, actually, I want to bring up what you were talking about, but the righteous, back at 2, 4, mm -hmm. and um, um, Romans 1, 17. Now, Romans 1, 17 says, For therein, and therein is the righteous of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, it says the just shall live. that you are just because you're living by faith because it's impossible to please God with faith. Mm -hmm. But in Habakkuk 2, 4, it says, Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Mm -hmm. Now, his faith shows that there is a particular faith that God gives to individuals. So now there's a general understanding of everyone else living, but there is a faith, which is an instruction that God gives particularly to you, to you. as a couple and as an individual, um, which is based off his word, because he does nothing on contrary to his word, that's particular to your circumstances and situation for you to live by and for you to do. And when you do that, you're in right standing and God will make things happen for you now every relationship is different and we're in different seasons as well so when we are getting up each day and we are praying together God will instruct our specific life um, to live by our specific faith that he will give us for that day I want to share an so, example on this go ahead yes please um, help me there back in 2010 I had a job in New York City we just moved over here to Jackson okay. and I was working in New York and uh, I wanted to stop working in New York and I wanted to work here in Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, you went online because we were communicating about this. You went online and you found a seasonal job at FedEx that I went in and I got the job for the season. But that job would have ended at the end of Christmas 2010 or 9. Yeah. 2010, sorry. So that end of Christmas came and they told everyone okay tomorrow is gonna be your last day thank you guys for all the help you know um, and at that point they they hadn't hired me as a permanent driver at the, at the company right I was a little frustrated and this and discouraged because now I took a leave of absence from the New York job and I would have to return to traveling back to New York every day mm -hmm. and and I wasn't hired permanently so I prayed and I got a specific instruction to get dressed and go back down there to pick up my check on the final day of my assignment and wait at the door. The, the, the location I was working at was off in Cranberry. Mm -hmm. I literally went down there and I, 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 I literally waited at the door, like stood at the door as I heard in my quiet time with God. And as I stood at the door, there was a gentleman going out. Um, I was expecting to speak to a specific person that person was missing in action but another guy was going out and i asked for this guy that i thought i should be meeting and he said i don't know where he is but um i'm going out to to drive around you, you know you doing anything you want to ride along so i rode along with this guy um and we started talking as i'm riding along i i expressed my frustrations to him who he wasn't the guy that I was working with the whole time, but I expressed my frustration to him about the, the fact that I wasn't hired permanently. And on that ride of just riding along with this guy, my problem got solved. He actually offered me two different positions that were available and I was able to pick the one that I wanted. And then from there, my, 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 my work history began to evolve to the point where, you know, I am in a new position where I am now there. Mm -hmm. So all of that to say that we're living by faith when we go before God and we trust the word of God. But you mentioned that other scripture in that, Romans that, that we should live by um, Habakkuk by Habakkuk, four, sorry. By Habakkuk two four said we should live by our, our faith, faith that God gave us specifically. specifically. And that is the, the spoken word of God or instruction.
to us individually. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what we want to do as believers is we, we want to generalize, generalize things, what things. everyone else is doing. Maybe we should do that because it is the word of God. And the church said this. And the church said, if it, we're doing all this, all of us got to do this. Like if we're fasting, all of us got to fast on the same day at the same time. But God might be telling you outside of that season, uh, in, in, two, in, in, in December, I'm sorry, maybe in February, we would like you to fast. Um, you know, go on a 24-hour uh, fast, and that's what that's all you needed. And the church may say, "Okay, fast with us in the beginning of the year." Now, we're not saying you don't you don't fast. That's your choice. But it's just an example of God would give you instructions specific to your specific um, situation for your breakthrough versus the faith of a, a collective um, number. Absolutely. And in my in and 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 the situation that I was talking about, a lot of times. We may look for, a, let's say, a career path that yeah. we were supposed to get. And because we're close to someone, maybe our neighbor, someone across the street, or someone that we respect, we try to emulate or get them to hook us up so that we can get work or provisions met or, or needs met based on a lifestyle that they have. But we're ignoring the plans that God is giving us specifically mm -hmm. to do so that he can pave our way mm -hmm. and for me i could have made a couple of other phone calls but in my quiet time god told me that day that i'm not going back to new york go down there and wait at the door and you'll meet a guy that was all i was told to do right. and in that moment i did meet a guy and he offered me two options one of them was the perfect option for me in that season which evolved into where God has put us now. Mm. So specific, uh, having a, a, a prayer life and having a, mm -hmm. a, a, a relationship where you're both in agreement, seeking God will Bring always the, lead. Bring the, the big relationship, um, the, the distant relation of the almighty God yes. to that personal space, yes. to your friend, yes. your father, intimate Abba. And so nice that's prayer. the power of, of, of prayer. So you want to pray us out? You pray us out tonight. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time with your beautiful children. We thank you that you remember your plans for them, plans to do them good and not to do them evil, plans for a bright and successful future. Father God, as they give in of their time to grow and to, to expand their knowledge and understanding concerning your intention and perfect will for their life and their relationship, that they will receive it because your word says those who seek they will find when they knock on the door it shall be opened and when they ask it shall be answered and so father God you're a God that keeps your word and we thank you Lord God that you continue to open up the understanding of your children give yes. them revelation knowledge give them a greater portion of revelation or even more than we could even um, speak or say to them because you know the perfect need for them you've created them you've established them you've you've um, you've justified them and you have a plan for them and that plan is still still in full force we come against every enemy's attack against them because we know that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood enemy but we, well, we flesh is wrestle against uh principalities and powers and, and 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 wicked spirits in heavenly places and rulers of darkness and so lord god we thank you that your word said in these things when things are too strong for us that we should humble ourselves before you and that we relay everything down to you you and then put on the full armor as well. So I pray on the full armor of your people and their families right now. The helmet of salvation on their head, the breastplate of righteousness on their chest, the redness of gospel of peace sandals on their feet, around their waist, the belt of truth, secured in their hands, the shield of faith that is able to quench the fiery darts of the enemy, and in their other hands, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the living God. You said to intercede on behalf of one another, and so Lord God, Joel and I extend um, our faith for them, Lord God. We stand in agreement for your perfect will to be manifest yes. in their life. If they're going through any situation in calm and with depression, oppression, 
lack or or or, or um, anti-progress in any way father god we right now come against we rebuke reject denounce and cancel the spirit of backwardness anti-progress of poverty of insecurity of shame of every everything that the enemy is trying to bring against them that is a lie father god we bind them and rebuke them and send them to the abyss where it can never return to them lord god yes, open the eyes of their understanding illuminate them lord god continue to show them your perfect will for their lives and as they seek lord god i know they will find lord god we thank you that your perfect will again is for them that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings they do not have room enough to re to receive and then they will know that you are the living god that cares about them and you and that their life matters to you in the mighty matchless name of jesus we pray amen 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 once again thank you for joining us and we love you. We look forward to talking to you next yeah. week. Have a blessed week. Um, for those of you that um, don't know, you can um, subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel. Yeah. And um, you can help us out by sharing uh, this video and um, sharing the link on um, our YouTube channel. Subscribe. Yeah, yeah. subscribe. And, and, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. All that good stuff. All that good stuff. Thank you, guys. Right, we love you. Love and you. look forward to seeing you next time. All right.